Hello amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So I've been looking forward to this recording all day today, all of my working day I've wanted to record this. I'm going to look at your methodologies and I'm going to see if I can give you guys some tips while I'm at it. So let's get right to this one. Uh, I'm going to do one per video I think, but we'll see, we'll see. So um, this one says, hey Uncle Rat, hope you're doing well. If you want, you can record this in your video anonymously. Here's my methodology. So first of all, finding subdomains, there are certain tools that you use. I see here, subfinder, asset finder, find domain, GitHub subdomain, okay, that's pretty good. Alive domains, HTTPX, what I don't see in here is like, okay, you have these tools that you're using. How can you automate them? How can you automate this process? Maybe that's something that I can, first of all, already say, uh, but let's not get too deep into things. Feed all your live do, uh, domains into Nuclear. Finding URLs, you're going to go with Wayback URLs, get all your URLs and then hack crawler, really good tools. Nothing's wrong with those, pretty solid. Run HTTPX to get live URLs, then you guys characters are not filtered. And then for finding box <clears throat> your manual check every parameter you render search or for on 404 and 403 domains and on bug categories you're looking for specifically cross-site scripting sql injection open redirect ssrf course information disclosure idor and ssti now already first of all really solid <coughs> methodology in here there's nothing really I see wrong with this, maybe a few things, and that's that you're using a heck of a lot of tools, but I see you also look at every parameter manually. If you do that properly, then there's no problem here. Um, but what I often see people do is, and it's really hard to actually go in and for these broad scope domains to actually find all of these different vulnerability types now what do i mean by that let's say you're looking for cross-site scripting so you find all of these urls all of these parameters that you get out of Aryan. that's really good already you feed them to kxss but i'm sure you're missing a heck of a lot of bugs because you're not really knowing what you're doing with kxss of course you use that to find out which characters are not filtered but are you really going in depth? Are you really looking at things that are reflected uh, and are how they get reflected in what context they get reflected and all of those different things? I know that you use it as a sort of an entry point, but these tools, they also miss a lot of things. And the same goes for Aryan, of course, you're looking for hidden parameters. You're looking uh, for endpoints using things like link finder. That's all great and all, but these tools also miss things. And a lot of people, they don't really know how those tools work because what link finder does is it's basically a regular expression tester. Uh, it's a really, really solid one. Don't get me wrong, but it does miss things. And what I'm seeing here is you like to go broad scope. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'd always like to recommend people is they, they start small, that they go for small scopes first and that they learn how these vulnerability types really work in essence. Because for example, a CSRF, it might seem simple, but I just filmed a video about it explaining in depth how CSRF works and it's not as easy as it might seem at first. So definitely make sure that you check that, uh, that you that you know what you're actually looking for when you start using these tools. A lot of these, a lot of the times people are using tools, expecting them to work for them, but that's not really how these tools work. Like, okay, you have this amazing process, but let's say nuclear, you feed all of your live domains to nuclear. What about writing your own nuclear templates? It's really not that hard. It's a simple YAML file, but you have to know what vulnerabilities you're writing for, because the moment you're going to do this, 
I'm basically seeing repetition of what other people are doing in here. And the thing is that allows you to only find the same things that other people are finding. Because I'll tell you what my friend, most of this is already beaten by me just entering a single domain into re-engine, re re re-engine, whatever, however it's pronounced. It's a really good tool. I've been running it on one of my targets and I feed it a, a URL, a subdomain that it can try to look for, a, sorry, a top level domain that it can try to go and look for subdomains on, do all of these things on, do a port scan on, do a vulnerability scan on with Nuclear. So all of these things have already been automated by somebody. So what I recommend is if you really want to do this, if you really want to go this route where you're using other people's tools, is to find the most effective tool that automates your whole workflow. And what I love about ReEngine or whatever that uh, tool is pronounced is that you actually get screenshots with Aquatone as well. That's something that I have in my process and that I always add in here. So I have my live domains that I'm going to use Aquatone for screenshotting. And that's a step I would definitely add. So then I would go over the screenshots. And what you did really well is that you're going to directory brute force every 403 and 404 endpoint. Well, add to that, that you're going to do a content discovery. And that is not just a, a dear search, but maybe use things like Fuff uh, to do content discovery, or maybe use the automatic content discovery that's in Burp Suite Pro. Uh, and you're going to do that on every login or on every custom login portal that you see as well. Um, now, make sure that your target allows these types of tools, of course, because otherwise don't run them. But if it does allow for running them at a reduced speed, just do it at a reduced speed. Um, make sure that you have a good word list because that's what's important in these specific tools is that your word list is really good, is really well um, made. And that's something people tend to forget is that, okay, we're all running the same tools and we're probably all running their lists from, um, uh, I think it's got milk that's produced its sec lists. I'm not sure. Don't shoot me on that. Um, but basically what I, I like to do is I like to add a little bit of a twist to that. And I like to customize the word list to the website I'm testing a little bit. So um, that'll depend if I'm testing a specific API, I might be looking for API endpoints that I'm going to use an API. Then I'm going to use a word list, which I has, which I, um, which has a lot of known API endpoints in it. Of course, uh, if I'm scanning for a Jira endpoint, I'm not going to use a whole big word list. There's no point in it but you're going to do that on custom login portals, that content discovery. Uh, and that allowed me to, in the past to actually find things like search pages that were not protected where they should have been. And that contained some very personal information there. So um, that's something that I would definitely add in there. Now, if you're running your tools anyway, start here, of course, uh, your subdomain enumeration, that's going to be important. Um, I. I'm not sure, but maybe you could add Shodan in here to just take a look for yourself and maybe do some manual recon as well. That's something I would definitely add in here. Now, what do I mean by manual recon? I mean by just going onto Google and seeing what subdomains are available and just clicking on them, just seeing what they have. Because of course the tool might mark a subdomain as important, but it might also miss marking one that's not, that's to it is not important but might be really important to us. You never know. Now, um, we've already added the screenshotting part. So, okay, that's fine. Um, going to do a port scan. That's also something I don't really see in here. Um, now for Nuclear, I would add my own templates. That's something that I would definitely learn to make your own templates. There we go, because if we're all scanning with the same templates, we're all going to find the same vulnerabilities and it's no longer fun. That's not what hacking is about. That's what script kiddies do is all run the same scripts day in, day out. They all run the same thing, hoping to find something we're better than that. 
So we're going to add Aquatone screenshotting in there. And while we're doing that, or at least after that, we're going to do a port scan as well. Port scan. And uh, after I have my ports, so I'm going to grab the ports. And after I have the ports, I'm going to do banner enumeration. And if I'm running nmap anyway, I'm going to do the default scripts as well. So that's, oh my god, if I can type today, nmap default scripts, that's the S. Uh, v, S, C, uh, there we go. S, C is the default script. Now, um, so in terms of that, you're pretty solid there. Would I do anything else? You already do content discovery, so that's good. Make sure that you do it on port 80 and port port, port 443. And if there's any strange web port on here, you also go looking for it. It's not that um, your nmap might not flag something as, as being important that you shouldn't look at it, of course. Every single web server that's found on a different port, make sure that you have look at those as well, because that's where usually some crazy stuff is hiding. I was testing this website one time and it was a pretty serious website. I can't disclaim too much about it, but I came across this, this completely random subdomain that somebody else hosted, but it was on a different port and uh, they had some just pictures of airplanes on there. I have no idea why, but it's really funny to see. <laughs> Uh, so as for the finding URLs, I think you got that pretty much covered. You are going to run HTTPX as well, um, then collect robots.txt uh, to a file and extract the disallowed entry points. That's also pretty good. Um, you might as well, uh, I don't know if you collect sitemaps, but that's also a good one to add in here to collect your sitemaps and to make a, a, see if you can't find any endpoints in there, of course. You're going to run link finder. One thing that you can also run is if you're running tools anyway, is secret finder. That's a tool based on link finder. It's going to do the same thing, but for secrets, of course. Um, I saw you did some GitHub subdomain recon in here. I don't know if you do GitHub domain because um, maybe manual recon. I mean, of course, Google dorking but uh, also GitHub dorking. That's also something that's important. Just go look on GitHub dorking. You're looking for things like secrets, API keys, uh, passwords, whatever the developers were dumb enough to, let, to leave behind. And don't only go in looking into the specific things that they have available now. No, go into look into every commit as well. Go into the history of the files. See if that there's anything that they might have left in there. Because something that they have in a, let's say in an environment variable, they might have put a password in there. Uh, but they might have not had that in the past. So in a previous commit, they might have still had the actual password in there. And it might still work. You never know. So definitely do those. Um, feed all to, sorry, we were here, run GF tools, fine, on your Aryan. That's also fine. Feed all the parameters to KXSS. Well, um, okay, that's good. But if you're testing all of these parameters, like, I don't know how you're testing every single parameter here. Um, I have a couple of guidelines there. Like for me, when I look at a parameter, I look at it specifically at its purpose. Okay, what is this parameter doing? Why is it doing here? And I try to not make any assumptions when I'm doing that. And when I test my application, I like to test functional applications, of course. So what I'm going to test for as I start out, I register as a cross-site scripting attack factor in every single field. <clears throat> then when the application needs one of those fields later, I'm automatically testing for it. Also SQL injection, also SSCI gonna throw in there. <clears throat> so a bunch of different things. Um, open redirect. I can't say anything about that because I don't know anything about open redirect. Um, I haven't studied it properly enough to make any any uh, claims about that. As for course, the same thing. Uh, I know enough about it, but I, I can't make that up on the spot. I have to investigate and then look at my notes again and all that different stuff. 
information disclosure that's also something interesting that's why i said the github recon that's what i would add idors and ssdi um, broken access control is something you can add in here that's definitely this almost the same as idor idor is a type of broken access control but you can have many different types of, of broken access control um in there so that's something I, you can add i'm thinking since you maybe have ssrf in here already as well that you might like the fact the technical box a little bit more so uh, it might be a idea to look at http request smuggling as well that might be an option for you or in security serialization it's not as hard as people think any serialized object that might often lead to vulnerabilities because people don't really know how to exploit it properly. So yeah, those are some tips that I could come up with on the spot. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. Thanks a lot for sending this in. And if you guys want to have yours reviewed, always welcome at info at the I can't make any promises, but I will sure as heck do my best. Please also mention if I can review them anonymously like I did right now. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.